I'm going to explain how to do a simple interface between a big microcontroller and an slave device using the Modbus RTU protocol. The transceiver I'm using is the MAX481, pretty much the same as the MAX485 and the ADM348. It has one driver and one receiver. The transceiver has four pins to interact with the microcontroller. RO and RE manage the receive and side communication. RE pin has to be in the low state in order to receive information. DE e and DI pins manage the transmission. DE e pins enable the transmission when it is high. The other four pins, G and D, is the ground, is the negative for the power supply. The A pin is a non-inverting receiver. The B pin is the inverting receiver. And both are connected to the bus. And finally, the VCC pin is the positive from the power supply. After explaining the MAX481 chip, we are moving to the sign, the PC4 circuit, which is very simple for this example. It contains a 3.3 volts for the power supply and uh, OLED interface with a uh, IE square C and I'm using the second port to communicate with the uh, Matbus chip as my peak microcontroller has a bulb loader I'm using pull ups resistors on, on the max 481 chip to hold it in idle state mode when I connect it to the power supply. So the whole left side of the chip has a 10k resistors on every pin. On the right side I have one pull up resistor and one pull down resistor on the bus. Also as my PC board is the beginning of the communication it has the 120 ohm across the bus. After that the process is very straightforward. Just checking for no short circuits, places the components on their places, and reeling the board. Now I'm going to explain the program, which is in this example for the big microcontroller access of the master device, asking for data to the deep sea controller. My program has five files. The main, the Mudbus code file, the Mudbus header file, the setup file, the interruption file. The main has the forever loop. Mudbus file has five functions according to the Mudbus protocol. The Mudbus header file is where you can find the macros for the code file. The setup file is where you set in order to use the asynchronous port. The interruption file has a flag which is activated every segment. So the big microcontroller is going to ask for the data every second. Going back to the main file, just before entering to the forever loop, we need to set the frames within the information from the slave device. This has to be done just once. Then in the forever loop we'll ask to the slave device sending the previous information plus the checksum. After that you just need to wait for the information coming back from the slave. If the checksum is corresponding, the slave device assuming everything is okay it will display the information on the old LED otherwise it will display a warning this is going to happen once every second now for the MacBooks function the first is where you set the transmission array according to the MacBooks RTU protocol first place is a slave ID then the function, which in this example is a number 3, 
breathing holding registers then to bite holding the address where you want to start reading the data from the slave device then another two bytes of how many registers you want to read this information is loaded on the header file then comes the transmission function which at the beginning you need to set high the, the E pin of the MAX481 in order to transmit and then send the previous information to the bus when it finishes you need to set back the DE pin in the lowest state on the MAX481 pin the receiving function has another function within which reads the receiving bus and it has a timer so if the timer expires and there is nothing on the bus it will skip the searching and read the array with the information loaded in this example the receiving array has 64 places for holding 64 bytes of data the transmission array has 8 places for writing 8 bytes of data and this is enough for the function number 3, the holding registers because you need just to send 7 bytes of data in order to ask for data to the slave device the checksum function is according to the Mathbus RTO protocol comparing the last 2 bytes from the slave device when it's ready and it will return one if everything is okay then fulfilling the last two bytes on the sending information currently I'm reading a genset controller a device to generate power supply controlling a diesel engine where you can get information such so old pressure coolant temperature fuel level and a battery voltage.